All right, boys, let's get it. Time to show these two how to really play the game. This guy has been going on and on about how he's been the only one to not die for days. Let him have his flowers. We got a transmission Donald, Joe's skill developed a bad reputation, and it's ultimately I'll take it in our the own faults for letting ourselves die. Yeah, getting angry about it won't do anything. Just take notes from me. Anyway, we're about to get the prompt to go to Vermeyer, but we won't be doing that today. Commander Instead, Joe is going to partake in a few of the more vital side missions. This might be the only time the council has ever been of any help to us. It would be pretty funny if they gave us the prompt to hang up and we just miss out on the Vermeer mission. So Barry, what challenges am I going to get to clear today? We should get the mission to go to Luna to deal with the rogue VI. You'll also do Helena Blake's missions, UNC, missing marines and the mission to rescue Nasana Dantius' sister. It would be fair to let you all know how we're handling the main story going forward. First will be Novaria, then we'll tackle Bring Down the Sky, then we'll finish things up with Vermeer, I loss in the finale. So we're not doing Pinnacle Station. Why in the hell would Pinnacle Station be on the schedule? I don't know, I think some people care about it. All 12 of the people that like Pinnacle Station are welcome to play it on the original Mass Effect one, or to mod it into the Legendary Edition. It's not seeing not one second of time of in these videos. Tell us how you really feel about it, Barack. Listen, I can't imagine playing Pinnacle Station when the Armax Arena in Mass Effect 3 is a much more enjoyable experience. Now, if we're done talking about irrelevant DLC content, Joe will be heading to the Citadel for a brief moment to talk to Admiral Kahoku to get the missing Marines mission. While we're here, I figure we might as well pay our final visit to Conrad. Careful, Joe. If you tell Conrad to piss off, he'll end up dying trying to jump a squad of Turians. Unreal respect to Conrad for trying to fight some of the birds, even if he dies. Don't worry, I'd at least like to see him in Mass Effect 2. What if you signed me on as another Spectre? April Fools isn't for another couple months, Werner, but that was a good one. Nearly enough times to make that seem like a good idea. Joke if you want, but there were people who didn't believe in you. Yeah, and Conrad, you right. but the difference between you and Barden Joe Shepard is his willingness to commit war crimes to, to, get do it takes to get the job done. Conrad, you have no Whoa, idea holy what it takes Joe. to get the well, job done. Well, color me impressed, Sleepy what? Joe. I didn't think please, you had that in you. Please, One bit of trivia that I'm aware of myself is that Conrad will accuse you of putting a, a gun in his Conrad. face no matter you what, so I might as well give him a reason to say it. I thought you were a hero. Is he crying? Conrad said he's aware of what Barden Joe Shepard did on Torfin, but is surprised we put a gun to his face. He should be lucky he's not a Batarian because, oh boy. Well, that ends the Conrad Werner arc. Oh, you know, I forgot Emily Wong had a second mission. I'll talk to her on our way out. First comes the Admiral. It's probably just another fake news media story. Congratulations on becoming the first human Spectre commander. Fun fact so about Admiral Kahoku here, well, his voice actor, Brian George, he voices I Oleg Petrovsky that. in Mass My Effect 3. And you might also recognize his voice from Dragon Age Origins, Spectres. where he voices Knight Commander Gregoire. Like Such a minor side problems. character, yet he has a pretty important side mission. UNC. Captain Missing Anderson Marines will begin a multi-mission assignment where we get familiar with a little black ops group known as Cerberus. You might have heard of them. Ah, uh, yes, back when Cerberus was just a tiny little black ops before they randomly become Skynet in just two years. I can shed a little light on that. You see, let's just say the elusive man has a very generous backer that goes by the name D. Trump. You're implying that you're a backer of Cerberus? I'm not implying anything. I've left a sizable sum of money in a hidden account that will gain interest until the year 2157, until the elusive man is ready to collect. Donald, don't you have a son around the age of 17 who might like to inherit some of that money instead of you leaving it for a fictional human survivalist paramilitary group? led by a man who sounds like Martin Sheen. I don't know, well, talk to Melania about him. I've got a proposition for you. Since you helped me get information- Well, this is the last we'll see of Emily Wong. We'll see Emily on the news, working for the Future Content Corporation, now, which has the same abbreviation as the FCC, interestingly enough. I've heard She'll also email us after the news breaks that we're alive. She offers an interview, but we unfortunately room, don't get to meet with her. Could. That's probably for if the best. If Emily interviewed us, Donald I would want to assault her. You guys just think I'm some kind of rabid animal who goes around wanting to assault the media? Like yes. yes. Well, fuck oh, you guys. Really anyway, during the Reaper War in 2186, Emily will be reporting with the FCC and the Alliance News Network, where she'll see a Reaper descending into the airspace above Los Angeles. Ha! I, I knew California would be the first state do. to get clapped up. Emily will make it to the Almonte Airport where she'll link up with some National Guard. 
Excellent. Just Unfortunately, more reapers show up, and Emily realizes her broadcast signal has been giving her location away. Emily's final move after getting shot in her attempt to escape in a sky van is to take the wheel and slam into a reaper, and her signal is immediately lost. Damn, my bad, Miss Wong. I wasn't familiar with your game. It might have been annoying that they killed Emily off through a series of tweets, but at least she went out like a badass, doing her job until the very end. Joe's going to go complete Emily's final mission for us, and then we'll head back to the Normandy, so we'll see you there. I'll have a better handle on all of it when my head stops hurting. Another L2 flare-up. Ever thought about going back under the knife? Maybe get an upgrade? No thanks, Commander. Caden makes it feel like getting an upgrade is a risky proposition, but Jack and Shepard go through an upgrade or two during the trilogy and do just fine. It's probably the biotic version of being afraid of getting a needle in the arm. Hey, that shit hurts sometimes, and the soreness in the arm you get for about a day. Uh, story there, Olenko. You know the records about the biotic training out on Jump Zero? They're all classified because the Alliance made mistakes. See, this is what I'm talking about with Caden. The man isn't boring. Fair. If you like hearing about world building stuff, Caden should be the squad mate you talk to the most. He's our window into how human biotics were developed early in the Mass Effect universe. Better than Ashley just wasting our time talking about her sister or whatever. I did not really I'm gonna know romance Liara. Don't you dare, you son of a bitch! I Donald, since when are you not DTF with an Asari? We should both Your be on the same side so here. So I'm role-playing, and I believe this Shepard would pursue Ashley over Liara. We don't have the luxury of time. An Asari can live for a thousand years. Interesting like little lore dump here. Human life expectancy will be 150 years by the 22nd species. century. See, it's not impossible for me to meet the Asari. I've I seen it said that the first person to live to be 150 is already alive. It could be me. Donald, your math ain't mathing. You your You'll be 150 in 2096, so you're going to miss the first contact war by 61 years. On top of that, the first person to live to be 150 was probably born sometime after the year 2000. You're not making it to the 2100s. What if I put my head in a jar like in Futurama? Then you won't have a body to actually do anything with the Asari. Okay, give me a few days, I'll figure something out. Donald, do you often waste time thinking about how you can meet with the Asari? Of course, why do you think I ran for president? I wanted to see if there was any top secret information on beautiful blue beauties in Area 51. Well, you had four years and didn't find what you wanted. Why are you running again? Mama Trump ain't raised no quitter. I'll dedicate my second term strictly to finding out if there are any hot aliens out there. That might legitimately be your most popular campaign promise, Donald. What can I say? I'm a man of the people. I wanted to know more about you. To understand what made you into the man you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Doesn't Liara say something about rumors of Asari promiscuity and here she is playing directly into them? Like I said, Barden Joe Shepard is the man he can pull whenever he wants. But it is crazy that it takes close to no time for Liara to be interested. You can recruit Liara whenever you want. And because of that, her dialogue has to progress faster than Ashley and Kate. To act on my feelings. I thought there might already be a relationship. That's because there is. No, no, there's nothing between Chief Williams and I. Tell her Ash is special, Joe. Let or go I'm of the do fucking it. mouse, Donald. Y'all, they're literally fighting. I care about that. Ha! Old man wrists over here couldn't stop me. Barry did that just lock us out? Uh, I don't think so. Wait! Too late, you annoying orange motherfucker. Right. The two of you are fighting like Ashley and Liara are actually here. Though this is only the flirting stage, nothing has been locked in yet. I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to. Ah, uh, we're getting Garrus's loyalty mission of Mass Effect 1, where we go after the Solarian, Dr. Hart. Is there any worth in doing this? I recall this mission being a bore. I mean, not really. The mission is basic, and it doesn't really do anything for Garrus's character. Though for roleplay purposes, it might be worth the trouble. It's not like it'll take long. We usually get a few of those? They got going down on the Citadel where the trade of organs is a common occurrence. CSEC can't be good for a damn thing if they let whole ass black market operations start up at the galactic seat of government. No wonder the Turian left. sells unwanted parts through the black market, but they're not as bad as the Cyclones. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Jesus Christ. I often think about what it would be like to live in the Mass Effect universe. But even the more civilized areas of the Milky Way so seem like a hellscape. Imagine you go up into Korra's den one day and then you wake up in a bathtub full of ice with an incision on your body that you don't remember having. And then you say, ugh, oh, not again. Not again, there isn't going to be an again with me. 
you only get one freebie with your kidneys. Ain't no freebies. Why would you put yourself in a position to lose any of your organs at all to begin with? Hey, one good night in Cora's den would be worth a kidney. You can't even do anything with them. They're strippers. You're not going to get a happy ending. One Krogan testicle. Excuse me, Krogan what? You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants... Is this the Mass the Effect rhythm. version of those Got ads that offer dick genitals. growth? It doesn't work. They don't work, that by the way. Stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Garrus casually letting us know that Krogan have four testicles. 10,000 a piece, that's actually crazy. Hmm, I wonder how much my set would go what for. What did you do about Didn't the need that visual, system. Donald. Don't no one want those raisins anyway. Interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. You mean threatened? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic. This is a pretty wild story from Garrus, not gonna lie. The Mass Effect universe is dark and filled with a lot of corruption. I'd have liked to see more of this kind of tone in the later games, but they leaned more heavily into the action. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of the Imagine growing like three or four extra livers inside you and then not getting a scent before they went bad. The real f***ed up we'll part, part is that the it. extra organs aren't even That's functional, so you can't drink three or four Never times the typical amount of alcohol to dull the pain. Surprised to see you here, sir. Thought you'd be chatting up, what's her name? And the drama begins. Ashley, baby, listen to me. Is yeah. that what you said to Why your first you two that? wives after the affairs, Donald? Oof, low blow there, Joe. It's better than what Joe said to his first wife. Oh, wait. Okay, bro, all right. And Donald takes it even and lower. At least she looks like a woman. How is Ashley going to talk about the regs against fraternization as if she didn't quote them herself earlier? So you are interested in her. And now she's twisting our words. Do the regs against fraternization even apply to Shepard as a specter? He's outside the chain of command, even if he is still an Alliance Marine. Ashley and Caden could just say they're dating a specter, not their commanding officer. Yeah, I'm still not trying to date my subordinates. Yeah. That's why I choose Miranda. She might follow our lead, but she's very much in charge of her own business. I think you're just afraid of getting canceled for something, Barack. You're lucky to have a close family. Sorry, I forgot about your family situation. Family situation is a pretty interesting way of saying my family and childhood friends were either killed or enslaved by Batarians, Ashley. Don't worry, we'll get it back in blood against the Batarians. All we need is a big space rock and a mass relay. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again. So while we talk to Tali here, I might as well keep it a buck fifty with you all. We do have the Geth Incursions mission ready, and we will most likely not be doing it. All of the loyalty missions in Mass Effect 1 are pretty uninspiring, but at least Garrus and Rex's are short and to the point. As much as I love to shoot the damn bots until they're reduced to scrap metal, Five planets of doing nothing but that single monotonous task is a bit much even for me. All of that just for a short paragraph of the Geth remembering how the Quarians lamented the loss of Rannoch. It is admittedly an interesting bit of dialogue demonstrating that the Geth did at some point care enough to think about what the Morning War did to the Quarians. Nope, nah, -uh, not gonna let that robot propaganda fool me into sympathizing with the bots. Aside from that, if you give the data you acquired a tally, she'll use it as her major discovery to complete her pilgrimage. When you encounter Tally again on Freedom's Progress in Mass Effect 2, you can point out that you gave her the Geth data to get her to believe you're really Shepard. Not that it matters. Tally inevitably believes you're Shepard regardless. Yep, there's a reason we put UNC Geth incursions in F tier after all. If I don't, it's like I failed. You trying to make me cry, Shepard? All right, and now we have Rex's little mission where we help him get his family armor. This one is worth the trouble. It is short also. I'm not entirely sure where our morality split is at right now. So we might definitely want to complete this okay, mission business. to make sure Rex survives on Vermeer. Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. You want to know what's crazy? 
Mass Effect 2 gets a lot of flack for all the daddy issues, but Rex is the first squad mate with a loyalty mission that is related to his old man. At least Rex had the decency to kill his dad like a billion years ago so Shepard wouldn't have to do it for him. Ah, home sweet home. Technically, this isn't home for us, as Barden Joe Shepard is a colonist. Yeah, yeah, whatever, but it's good to see the U.S. is still looking good in the 22nd century. Looks like all that global warming stuff was a bunch of nonsense. Or maybe BioWare just didn't think to put Florida underwater. It is crazy that Futurama did the lost city of Atlanta when it would have been more accurate to do the lost city of Miami. So, Joe, about this mission coming up here. Oh, hell nah, Barack. I've been listening to this motherfucker for over a week go on about how I died and he hasn't. We're taking the training wheels off, taking the pacifier out his mouth, and making him handle this on his own. Yeah, don't sweat it, Barry. This mission is just a bunch of drones or something, right? Okay, but you should at least quick sit. Nope, silence Barack. He gets absolutely no help. Let Sleepy Joe sink or swim. All right, fine. Let's see how this plays out. Uh, are you not even going to destroy the turrets? Why should I? For the experience and equipment you can get from it. Uh, who cares? I'm just ready to show I can do this. Ah, the good old Mass Effect 1 reused asset tunnels, the classics. Bring it on. Joe's really dedicated to using the pistol for no reason. I can already tell this is cooked. Oh, shit! How are you already at no shields and half your health? Bro's about to die on the first run. Ah! Why are you running? Get back in there, Marine! It was a strategic retreat. Now watch me. Joe, for the love of God, put the goddamn pea shooter away and pull out the shotgun. Use your powers. You're a sentinel, Joe. There you go. I told you, I'm him. Shit, 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 shit. No goddamn way are you surviving a second time by running away. It's a perfectly legitimate strategy, Donald. Don't hate because you didn't think of it first. Hey, he's got a point. He hasn't died yet, and there's only one drone left. This is ridiculous. The guy can't play at all. Got to be doing something right, considering you've died more than me. Unfucking believable. Good goddamn job, Joe. You actually managed to clear the first room. I told you I'm that guy. Oh, sh. Yeah, see, that's why you destroy the turrets first. What the hell kind of plot armor does this guy have to have not been killed by either of those rockets? What can I say? I guess Ashley and Caden love me enough to take those hits. Finally, some action. Joe, good lord, get into cover. You're eating damage like you think you're on the soldier class. You just don't understand, Barry. I perform best when I'm under pressure, so I let the enemy shoot me so I can enter the flow state. Gotta be the worst flow state requirement I've seen in my entire life. I don't know if you noticed, but Caden just went down. Good, that'll contribute to my locking in. Joe, if you actually clear this without dying, I will legit drop out of the presidential race. Wait, don't say that, Donald. That's too much pressure. I'll transfer my entire net worth into your bank account, too. No, sh let me out. I need space. Uh, Joe? No, God damn it, no! Damn, Joe, that's too bad. You could have had it all. The presidency, the money, all of it. What an immense fumble. It's your fault, Donald. I don't need you adding extra layers to my struggle. Oh, my bad, big fella. I didn't realize you couldn't handle a few extra stakes. Well, with that, Joe finally has his first real death, and we're all tied up here at the half. Wait, what? What's wrong, Joe? Why are we back here? Doesn't this game autosave? Kinda. The Mass Effect 1 autosaves are abysmal. Believe it or not, they used to be worse in the original trilogy release. And now we've all learned a valuable lesson in quick saving. Why didn't anyone tell me to quick save? Now I have to do the first room again. I was going to tell you to do it, Joe, but Donald interrupted me. You're pampering him too much, Barack. He has to learn. He saw you quick save plenty of times during the Thorian lair. It's his own fault if he wasn't paying attention. True, but now we have to sit here and watch him do the whole thing from square one again. It's not like we have anything else going on. You finally realized the true worth of the shotgun, Sleepy Joe. Well, I noticed that the both of you have put close to no points into our sentinel skill, so our pistol is underpowered. Yeah, the shotgun is more fun. Just wait until we get those high explosive rounds. Those things are hilarious. One shot, and the NPCs just go flying. OK, OK, not bad, Joe. I'm seeing some improvement. The weight of not getting a death has been lifted. Help! Unpause, you coward. Not going to lie to you, Joe. You're completely cooked. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Turns out it's not just the pistol, huh, Joe? Well, 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 Sleepy Joe. Just like that, you have the most deaths. The natural order has finally been restored. The universe is healing. The crazy part is that this is only the first in the series of side missions he has to do. Yep, plenty of runtime for him to rack up more deaths. Screw you guys. 
You've been praying for my downfall for months. Don't get all pissy now, Sleepy Joe. Not after all this shit you've been talking. Thank Christ that's over. Good work, Joe. Caden died in the most zesty pose I've ever seen. Oh, uh, they put barriers up now? Not gonna lie, it was pretty f***ed up of Bioware to put class specialization behind this dull side mission. I was just about to say I would have 100% skipped this on my own. The extra lore surrounding Edie isn't really worth it, but class specialization is a really good bonus, especially since we're playing Sentinel. But I do have to agree, pretty dull side mission content overall. I suppose a fun fact or two that I can offer here is that the Luna VI's name is Hannibal, and Alec Ryder from Mass Effect Andromeda mentions the destruction of the Luna VI. Tying this side mission to Andromeda isn't exactly doing it any favors. All right, one more to go. Oh God, I'm scared. Just shoot the shield and get it over with you, coward. This is diabolical game design. The second I shoot the shield, those rockets are destroying me. Just think of hitting the pause button as entering turn-based mode in Baldur's Gate. Barack go one video without mentioning Baldur's Gate challenge. Impossible difficulty. Okay, good start. Oh my god. Okay, now don't die a third time on one damn mission, Joe. That'll just be sad. These goddamn rockets, man! We're just durable enough to eat one rocket. Is it over? I think Caden finished it off. Getting carried by Caden is crazy. I don't ever want to see another one of these godforsaken drones again for the rest of my life. No, you have got to be kidding me. Last leg, Joe. Good luck. I hate this so much. Why did I have to do the side missions? They're in the other room, Joe. Calm down. I'm surprised whipping around like that didn't shatter your wrist. Uh, okay, man. Come on. You'll be done soon, Joe. Just a few more drones. That's I don't get how this can be anyone's favorite mass effect with side missions like these. A rare occasion where Sleepy Joe and I are in sync. Barack is out of his mind favoring this game over Mass Effect 2 and especially Mass Effect 3. Sorry, I'd rather 80% of my games not being about helping all my friends with their daddy issues and having an extremely unsatisfying ending that most people in the fan base choose to head canon around. Bro has a PhD in Yapology. Why Barack was doing another rant, I cleared those drones with zero difficulty. About damn time you did something without struggling. I did your mom pretty well without struggling just last night. Ha ha. Okay, Joe, I'll give you that one. Y'all got one more time to talk about my mother. Go on, keep it up. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Translate, Barack. The binary here simply translates to help. Damn, I feel kind of bad now. So did Admiral Hackett lie when he said this wasn't an AI? I don't believe Hackett knew exactly what was going down here. Edie pretty much confirms in Mass Effect 2 that what goes down here was the result of intentionally creating a controllable artificial intelligence. But as we clearly see, that didn't exactly pan out. Does it ever pan out? It did with Edie. The Council also investigates this, but I'm pretty sure the Reaper War interrupted things. So what's the best bet here, Barry? Pick Bastion. Medic is virtually useless, and Bastion is top two specializations in the game. Medic, as you might expect, is all about being a support. It improves your first aid and neural shock. Donald is right. Bastion is the better option by a mile. Setting aside the fact that it makes your biotic powers recharge faster, it improves the strength of your barrier, and it lets you harm foes you capture in stasis, which is just flat out broken. Even you should be able to survive a bit longer now, Joe. I'm just glad to be off this godforsaken rock. All right, now we're going to go find Admiral Kahoku's missing Marines. What kind of a hellscape is this planet? Pretty sure it's just the average day in Phoenix, Arizona. That city should not exist. It's a monument to man's arrogance. It's Kalros. No, Joe, it is not Kalros. It is a Thresher Maw, though. Good luck. Joe, if you have any balls at all, you'll hop out the Mako and fight it on foot. Are you out of your damn mind? It's actually totally doable, in fact. It's better to do it on foot because the Mako is actually pretty weak in comparison to some of the guns you can get. It is high risk, though, because the Maw will 1,000% one-shot you and your squad. Yeah, cool. I think I'm going to keep my ass inside the heavily armored and shielded tank instead of taking on the Alaskan bullworm on foot. My name is not Sandy Cheeks. Crazy how the damn drones were a bigger threat than the Thresher Maw. This officially puts us in the same league as Rex, right? Not even close. 
While I have no doubt that Commander Shepard could kill a Thresher Maul, Rex did it by himself on foot with nothing more than a gun. With the missing Marines mission done, we need to go back to Kahoku to progress things, but we won't be doing that today. We'll pick it up another time. Time to go deal with, I mean, rescue Nasana's sister. I'm sure it surprises nobody. But the layout of this arena here is repeated in two other side missions, UNC, Hostile Takeover, and UNC Privateers. And let's be honest here, we know how this plays out. Nasana's sister, whom we're supposed to be rescuing, is in fact a pirate. And Nasana actually wants us to take her out to protect her diplomatic reputation. So basically, she used us to do her dirty work. And Asari can use me however they want. Well, no need to worry. Nasana will learn her lesson about using people in a couple years. Good Lord, I can taste the cold on this map just looking at it. Even the soundtrack sounds like it's below freezing. Hey, it's that one week in January where it was winter in the continental U.S. You know, everywhere except for South Florida, they were hanging out at the beach while the rest of us got our little taste of winter for the year. It did for real go from the coldest winter of all time before shooting right back to the middle of April temperatures on a dime. What are we doing in this frozen wasteland anyway? On our way to go take care of Helena Blake's two rival gang leaders. Right, because we draw the line at smuggling illegal tech and gambling. A little time at the casino never hurt anyone. Yeah, Donald, with your money, I don't think you have as much to worry about as the average person who goes to Las Vegas. Okay, but smuggling illegal tech is perfectly legit. Blake does say her partners sell slaves to the Batarians. Okay, and now this is personal for Bard and Joe Shepard. Uh, are these guys okay? I never noticed how finicky the enemy AI can be in Mass Effect 1. That was legit the crime boss. He just stood there and watched as you blew up a fire extinguisher and then shot him dead. I can't believe Blake needed our help with these scrubs. Why are both of these criminal organizations operating in the damn Arctic? There are mad tropical planets. I mean, if I were a cop trying to investigate these people, I would for sure let them go. Not gonna catch me in an environment that's so cold that your face hurts. I'd rather live where the cold hurts my face than deal with hurricanes or have to avoid every body of water because it might have a damn gator in them. You can just say you don't want to live in Florida, Joe. All right, final crime, boss. This will go down as easy as the first lot. Not if you get sniped, it won't. Please, who do you think I am, Donald? You? I'm not dumb enough to get taken out by that obvious red laser. Uh, Joe? What? Obvious red laser, huh? There's no way the crime boss was ready to use assassination again? Hey, dumbass, there's more than one sniper. Why would there be more than one? I hope getting triple the amount of deaths that Barack and I have individually has humbled you, Joe. Man, f*** this, I don't want to play anymore. Come on, Joe, you're nearly at the end here. Ah, there's the weak-minded Joe I'm familiar with. All that energy he's had has finally fizzled out. And now we have the final confrontation with Helena. So getting into the consequences of things here, Naturally, you can decide to take Blake down here and put an end to this entire criminal organization, which is what we should probably do. Sounds boring. Give us the fun outcomes. One option is to talk Blake into disbanding her criminal organization, after which she will become a social worker on Omega. Social work on Omega? Sounds like a nightmare profession. I bet it pays well. That place is such a hole. It's probably filled with people who need therapy. The other outcome is to encourage Blake to continue her usual operations, and by the events of Mass Effect 2, her organization will merge into Arya Talok's group on Omega. Those days are over. Well, what's it gonna be, Sleepy Joe? I'm definitely not fighting. My hands hurt, my eyes hurt, and my back hurt, and all I wanna do is get some sleep. You'd probably get a fourth death if you actually tried. You did good today, Joe. I'd say you earned a rest. I'm giving you one chance to live through this. Shut this gang down. I cannot believe you place such a high priority on stopping such petty, victimless crimes. I'm all if or nothing, Blake. All gang, crime must be I stomped out. Yeah, pay no sleep. mind to all the I crimes we're gonna commit during our journey. Be arrested. I would die before going to prison. I would most certainly kill before going to prison. Gotta respect now, Blake for that. So Homegirl said she is not You're going to jail. To go. I don't ever want to see this gang again. If I do... You won't. I'm not so foolish as to break my word to a specter. Now, if you'll excuse me, my men become nervous in the presence of law enforcement agents. <laughs> Goodbye, Shepard. Before we end things here, I'm going to do Donald a favor and drop him off on Nova Rio. Gee, thanks, Joe. I totally couldn't navigate the galaxy map on my own. You're lucky, Donald. Joe got Therum, which was short, and I got that dull piece of trash Pharos. Meanwhile, you got to play Eden Prime, and now you're getting Novaria.
confirmation cannot be established, your vessel will be impounded. Impound the Normandy? Ha, ah, good Unpunched. luck. If Shepard and the squad don't stop weekend. them from impounding the Normandy, Joker sure as hell will. Joe, I highly recommend grabbing Liara for this one just to add a little flavor. Yeah, pick me up Rex too. I need my big guy with me to help deal with the giant roaches. Any other requests? That's far enough. Something wrong, officer? You better hope there isn't. Ah, this Kyra is Sterling, I remember her. I your credentials. Commander Shepard, Systems Alliance Navy. The next Navy patrol is if you introduce yourself as a Spectre, they'll doubt You're your credentials. Home, Commander. <laughs> Which is a bit odd. We're a good couple weeks removed from Shepard's ceremony, so I'd so expect that news to reach Novaria. Sergeant Sterling, secure their weapons. Whoa, hold on now. One thing I think we can all agree on is not giving up our firearms. You can pry them from my cold, dead hands. This is America. Donald, you can't call That's everything in space fight. America. Why not? We're going to put military Captain bases Michael, across every down. corner of the galaxy like we, we do on their Earth. We identity. Spectres are authorized to carry weapons here, Captain. You may proceed, Spectre. I hope the rest of your visit will be less confrontational. Far it won't. True, but upstairs. Matsuo doesn't have to worry about any of the confrontation. Well, we've reached the end point. It's been a wonderful day. The natural order has been restored. Joe proved himself to be utterly helpless in this game. Yeah, whatever, man. Screw this. I'm out. Yeah, it ain't so easy when the enemy AI actually wants to fight you, isn't it? Next time, Donald will get us through Novaria. And by the end of it all, we'll be one step closer to stopping Saren. Until then, stay safe out there, drink plenty of water, get some sleep, and we'll see you on the next one.